we're not animals. Let the dogs I know you might think that we're animals, but we're not, right? We're created differently than the animals are. No, no, watch your mouth, watch your mouth. Fuck. No, see, that's exactly what it is. He hates God, that's why he's acting. Fuck that's, that's called assault, sir. I wouldn't want to do that, you're on camera. So, I'm here because I love you, I don't hate you. And repent and put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and Christ alone. He's the only one who can save. There is one name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved by, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. You say, God, have mercy on me, the wicked sinner. Well, good afternoon, Berkeley. My name's Adam. I'm here as a Christian reaching out to a lost and dying world. That would be anybody who's not a Christian. And my hope is that you'll hear the message of the gospel, you'll hear the message of the cross, see your need for forgiveness, and turn and be forgiven of your sin. How about you, gentlemen? Are you right with God today? Yes, sir. What makes you right with God? Just an arbitrary claim, yes? Or is there something that justifies your way of thinking? I'm not too sure, sir. Yeah, so that's like me coming up to you and saying, hey, you know, are you a surgeon? No, okay. That's me coming to you and saying, hey, I know you're, I heard you're a surgeon. You said you were a surgeon. Can you do surgery on me? And you're like, I don't know how to do surgery. That's the same scenario as what you just gave back to me when you said, yeah, but you can't articulate why you're right with God. So you need to know how you're right with God, how you're made right with God. Have you ever thought about that? So here's the issue, my friend, is your sin separates you from God. So you can't be right with God in your current condition. You need Christ, friend. And you know God exists. It's not like it's a, hey, I don't believe in God or I don't believe in the things that you're saying. You know it to be true, otherwise you can't know truth. This is what is the problem with most campuses these days. They can't even justify what truth is. They're, they're, they're wandering around, taking tests, you know, trying to answer the questions, trying to do the best they can to graduate, and they don't even know what truth is. They can't articulate what truth is or where it comes from. And so our... As Christians, we know where truth comes from. Truth is starting, the starting point of truth is it reflects the thinking of God. The God that you know, the God that you may suppress. The Bible refers to people who suppress the truth and unrighteousness. They are claiming that they can know truth, yet they refute themselves with the claims. They actually live in contrary to what the Bible says, what the Bible claims, and then they claim that they can have truth. Well, that's a sad state, my friends, of reality. People walk around, they, they believe that they know things to be true, yet they can't articulate what truth is. When Jesus Christ himself said that I am the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus was exclusive, he wasn't inclusive. He said that he is the way. That doesn't mean like you can just come up with your own arbitrary way. It doesn't mean you can go to another religion and think that you're going to be right with God on the day that you die. You will stand before God the day that you die, because the Bible says it's appointed once to die and then face the judgment. Well, who's going to judge you? Is it going to be the the, your parents? Is it going to be the society that you were grown and raised to believe in certain things? Is your judge ultimately going to be somebody from this planet like your best friend? No. The Bible says that the judge of all the earth is Jesus Christ. You will stand before God and have to give an account for your life. It's not like it's my arbitrary claims of morality or whatever it is. It's what God says in His Word, my friends. His Word is what dictates truth. It's His Word that gives us morality. It's His Word that allows us to know things to be real. How about you, my friends? Are you right with God? No. You, did you say no, sir? Okay, I appreciate your honesty. Because that's what the Bible says about everyone outside of Christ. They're not right with God. They're under the condemnation of God. And their judgment will be severe. Especially now these days. It'll be greater for you, Berkeley, who hear the gospel message and reject it than it was for Sodom and Gomorrah. Where God would rain down fire and brimstone upon a city for their wickedness, for their sexual immorality, for their hatred toward one another and their hatred toward their guests. You see, you will stand before God and have a higher accountability because of the gospel message that was being proclaimed to you today. And that is that Christ came, died on the cross for sinners like you and me, and that if you believe in Him, right, that He was buried and rose again, that He died on the cross for your sins, you can have your sins forgiven. And you can be made right with God today. Today is the day of salvation for you. Don't die and go to a devil's hell, my friend. Friends, 
Turn, repent of your sin, and put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the one who is mighty to save. That's right, even you, the wicked sinner, like me, who was the wicked sinner, but I've been saved, my friends, because of the grace and the mercy of God. So my question is for you today, are you right with God? Have you ever thought about that, sir? You smile. You smile about it. Have you been made right with God? And on what basis are you right with God? The God that you know, it's not like it's a question mark. It's, you may be suppressing the truth of God in your unrighteousness, but you know God exists the same way I do. The difference is I embrace the truth and you run from it. You're the rebel that's running from the, the law, the, the righteous standard of God, the law of God, which confronts every single person in their sin. It confronts you in your sin, my friends, and that is what the gospel message does. It confronts you in your sin. It confronts you. It shows that you're a liar. It shows that you've dishonored your parents. It shows that you've committed acts of immorality. It shows that you've lost it after people and committed adultery. It shows you who you really are in the line of righteousness. So if the day that you die, you don't have Christ's righteousness imputed to you, you'll stand before an angry God, one who will judge you according to His standards. Not my standards, but His standards, my friends. You'll be judged to His standards, not mine, not your societies, not your friends, not your countries, not your other false religion standards, but on God's standards alone. And He's the one who gives us an absolute sense of morality. You can't justify why murder is wrong apart from God. You can't justify science apart from God. You can't justify anything apart from God. You have God, and therefore you can have objective truth. How about you, my friend? You right with God today? You ever thought about that? Or are you living after self? You're trying to laugh it off. It's like no big deal. You see, the, full, the, the Bible says that the fool mocks a sin. The fool mocks their sin, sir. So you're lying. You'll give an account someday, my friend. I don't want you to die and go to hell. I want you to go to heaven. I want you to be made right with the God that you know. Be made right with the God you know today. Don't harden your heart. Don't turn from the truth. Embrace the truth. That you're in need of forgiveness. That you're in need of God's righteousness. And that is only found in Jesus Christ. How about you, my friend? There is no such thing as an atheist. There's no such thing as a true atheist, a true agnostic, a true believer in something else because everyone knows the God of the Christian Bible. Everyone knows the Christian God of the Bible, my friends. But some want to run from the truth. Just like you're the criminal running from the police, you don't want to be confronted with the truth. You want to run from the cops because you just robbed the bank. You want to run from the holy, righteous God that is because you've broken His law. And that is the standard that you cannot live up to, friends. The Bible says that everyone has fallen short. Every single one of us is not right in the eyes of God apart from the righteous work of Jesus Christ. Only through Jesus Christ, His righteous life and His perfect death on the cross, where He would pull upon Himself the wrath of God for all those who would believe. See, He died on the cross for His people. He died on the cross for His sheep. He didn't die on the cross for everyone. It's for those who believe. If you don't believe in Christ, the atonement is not applied to you. The atonement of the righteous King of Kings is not applied to you. So you need to have the righteousness of Jesus Christ imputed to you today before it's too late because you could die in your sin. You could die tonight. You could die in some tragic accident. We don't know. Over 150,000 people die every day. And they weren't expecting it. They weren't necessarily expecting that they would wake up in the morning and then be dead by the end of the day. So what are you going to do on the day, my friends, that you stand before God? It's not like your good works are going to outweigh your bad. There is no such thing as good for you apart from Jesus Christ. The righteous God de demands perfection. You don't have perfection to offer an eternal righteous God. How about you, my friend? You took a picture. You ever think about your death? you have an answer for death, sir? No. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You don't. Which is why you need to listen to the m gospel message, my friend. You can't just walk away in your sin. You'll die in your sin. I don't want you to. I want you to go to heaven, my friends. I want you to turn from your sin. It's called repentance. Repent of your sin and put your faith in Christ. You see, sin is what confronts us. Sin is the breaking of God's law. Whatever you do that is not in faith is also sin. So what is your faith in today? Is your faith in your education? Is your faith in science, quote-unquote? 
Well, my friends, that's begging the question. You can't even have science apart from the Lord of glory. You can't have science apart from all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are hidden in Him. That's Jesus Christ. And the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge. You can't have wisdom or knowledge without the fear of God. And that's a terrible place to be. Denying reality. Denying the ability to do science. Denying the ability to do mathematics. How about you, my friend? Are you right with God today? Have you thought about it? If you were to die today and stand before God, what would He say? Come, be blessed? Or would He say, turn from me, depart from me, I never knew you, you who practice lawlessness? Is that what He's going to say to you on the day of judgment, my friends? He's going to replay your life. He's going to replay all the things that you've done that have broken the law. And He's taken an account today. It's, it's even better than like Facebook, man. God can see all the things from the time you were born to the time that you die right today. He can see all your sin. And what you need is to be cloaked in Jesus Christ. His righteousness. He lived the life you and I can't live, my friends. He went to the cross, an innocent man. And then he was buried, and then he rose again three days later. How about you, my friend? Are you right with God today? Have you thought about the truth? Or do you just continue to want to reject the truth because you know it confronts you in your sin? Your love of sin. Your hate of God. The Bible says that everyone, apart from Jesus Christ, they don't seek after God. How about you, my friend? You're right with God today? Are you an atheist? You claim to be an atheist, sir? There's no such thing as atheists. And like my sign says, atheism, my friends, it's an opioid crisis. People who deny God, they're, they're trying to silence the conscience that's within. And that's why they deny the existence of God when the obvious truth is that He created the heavens because the heavens declare the glory of God. But people love their sin. They don't want to admit the fact that God is. They run from God just because they're the criminal, my friends. We're criminals in the eyes of God. We're lawbreakers. We need Christ's righteousness given to us. So we need to call upon the name of the Lord today. Call upon Jesus Christ's name. There is one name given among men under heaven that where we must be saved. So you must be saved. You must be saved by the one name, and that is Jesus Christ. The King of Kings. The Lord of Lords, the ones that you base your calendar off of. He's, he's completely changed the world and the time, the short time that he was on this planet. Why? He was no simple prophet like the, the Muslims would try to tell you. He's not just some random guy who God sent. He's the King of Kings. He's the Lord of Lords. He's God's precious Son. No, my friend, my, the truth is too important to shut up. So if you want to actually have an intelligent... Exactly. You just show off the depravity of your heart, my friend. That just shows off the depravity of your heart. Put down the bird and pick up your Bible. Put down the bird and pick up your Bible, my friends. The Bible will make you wise unto salvation. All right? I'm not here because I'm better than you. I'm only better off. Only because of what Christ has done. And if you have Christ, then I'm not better off than you. Matter of fact, I would say I'm the worst of sinners. All right? I'm not better than you. I've lied too. I've stolen. I've committed adultery. I've done all these things. But the problem is, friends, is your sin still intact to you and you're going to have to pay the penalty of your crimes on the day you die. Or, or, did Christ pay for that on the cross? How about you, my friend, with the bike? Are you right with God today? You are? On what basis are you right with God? Have you thought about that? This is truth. This is a true conversation and it's important. Okay? It's not like, oh, I can just make an arbitrary claim. Yeah, I'm right with God. You need to know before you die. And that could be today. You're not promised another minute, my friend. You're not promised another minute. Turn, my friend. Turn to Christ and live. Turn to Christ and live. There's no hope for you outside of Jesus Christ. You might think so. You might... What are you searching after in this world? What is your... What is, what is the method? What is the mode? I'm sorry? Yes, it's an opioid crisis. That's right. Everyone knows God exists, but when you claim to be an atheist, you're suppressing the truth in your unrighteousness. You don't like the truth, so you run from the truth. Everyone knows the Christian God of the Bible because it's the impossibility of the contrary. By the impossibility of the contrary. And if you've got a different belief or if you have a different... Uh, idea, please come and engage with me. I'm here because I'm your friend today. I'm your servant today. I'm here to share with you the truth that could set you free. See, Jesus said you're a slave to your sin. You're a slave to your sin. Everyone is 
here walking today is a slave. Did you know that? You're a slave. You're either a slave to your sin, which means you don't get a say over it, or you're a slave to Jesus Christ. There's only two classifications of people, my friends. Those who have been made right, those who are righteous in the eyes of God, and those who are still enemies of God today. You too. I remember, because I remember your shirt from before. So how can you possibly have a good day, my friend? How can you possibly have a good day if you're still under the wrath of God? You can't. You could try to hide it. You could try to run from the truth. But you can't, my friends, because you can't escape the truth. It's not material. It's immaterial. And the Spirit of God is immaterial. All right? The Spirit of God is immaterial, which is why He can be everywhere. He will come and He will judge the world in righteousness. He's going to return to judge the world in righteousness. He's not coming back as a meek and lowly Savior. Because He's already done that. He's already lived the perfect life that you and I can't live. He's already went to the cross. He's already died and was buried and rose again. Which is the gospel message for sinners. The good news is what gospel means. And you need to believe the gospel. You need to hold on to the gospel truth. Welcome back. Have you thought about this answer? Have you thought about the answer? I was thinking, right? Great. I'm glad you were thinking. That's what we want. You know, I actually came to realize that I wasn't a believer in Christ. And I need you to resurrect me, you know? I can't do that. That's not my job. My job is to give you the truth. And you can reject it. You can mock it if you want. No, I need you to give me the truth. Okay, here's the truth. That you're a sinner, right? Do you believe that? So you've lied. We're all sinners. I agree. Yeah, everyone has fallen short of the glory of God. I'm not better than you. Just because I have a sign and I'm holding a Bible and I'm standing on this little thing that's got a biblical precedent behind it, doesn't make me better off than you. Right? So I'm in need of the same forgiveness that you're in need of. So the question is, if you were to be found guilty of breaking God's law, like lying, like stealing, like committing adultery, watching pornography, those types of things, who's not guilty of that? Put your hand down. Yeah, okay. Right? So we're not any better than each other, right? We've come to that conclusion. Yes, sir. So here's the point. We're appointed once to die and then stand before God and be judged according to His standard. Not my standard, not yours, not society's standard. So where do you find His standard? I'm not sure, sir. A good way to look at the standard it is in God's Word. So 10 out of 10 people die, and the Ten Commandments are like a schoolmaster to us. It shows us. Where can I get a Bible? Anywhere. Download one. You got a phone? Uh, yeah, I you got a cell phone? I'm sure you guys got cell phones, right? Right? So just download. There's like a thousand of them. Free Bible apps. They don't even cost you anything. And you can start reading today. I would, I would recommend starting in the book of John. And even in the book of uh, Romans is good. Because the Romans starts off expose it, exposing the idea that everyone knows God. But they suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Yes. Why, why, why is God so against, you know what I'm saying? Like homosexuality? Yeah, homosexuality? yeah. Well, because the way God designed and created man and woman is after his own image. And then he said, this is the reason that the man would leave his mother and father. He would become one with his wife. Right? He didn't, he didn't become one with Steve. He, could, he becomes one with his wife. So the design that God has for proper intercourse and marriage is between a man and a woman under the confines of marriage before God alone. Okay, so that is God's design. Anything outside of God's design is considered perversion. Therefore, it's sinful. All right? And it's not like the Bible is silent about these things. Okay? People like to make arguments and say, oh, the Bible is talking about pedophilia. Well, that's simply not true. In the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9, it clearly states homosexuality. It doesn't say pedophilia. The Greek word for pedophilia is pedophilia. Paul didn't use that word. Paul is the author of 1 Corinthians. He wrote the word arsenokointes, malakos arsenokointes, which is two men in a bed for sexual reasons. And he says this. I'm going to read it to you. I could quote it to you, but just so you know, I'm not just making things up, okay? Here we go. And this is important. Listen to this, because you're going to notice something, okay? I'm going to point it out. Ready? Do you not know the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Okay, so something is unrighteous, right? And they're not going to heaven. And then he says, do not be deceived. What is going around today in society? People are trying to force this LGBT stuff down people's throats everywhere you go. It's, in every, it's practically in every Dunkin' Donuts I walk into. It's, on, it's in Starbucks. It's everywhere. They're forcing it down. It says, do not be deceived. 
So don't be deceived about the things that he's about to say that are considered unrighteous. And here it is. All right? Do not be deceived. No sexual moral people, idolaters, adulterers, males who, or males who have sex with males, which is homosexuality, it's pretty clear, right? Males who have sex with males, or thieves, or greedy people, or drunkards, or verbally abusive people, or swindlers, will inherit the kingdom of God. They're not going there. But here's the important part. Verse 11. And such were some of you. This is Paul the Apostle writing to a, the church of Corinth, and he's saying, such were some of you. So guess what? You don't have to die that way. You can be made new. How? This is how. Such were some of you, right? But you've been washed. You've been sanctified. You've been justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. So you can be changed, right, from your drunkenness, from your homosexuality, from any sin that you're committing. You can be given a new nature and become born again, which is what Jesus says in John 3, 3. You must be born again, he says, if you're going to enter the kingdom of God. What does that mean? Right? What, is, what does that mean about being born again? I'm not sure. I'm sorry, ma'am. Did you have a question? No, I'm going to talk to him about, him. about what? Are you okay? Yeah, they, they're fine. They're asking me questions about certain things. Like he brought up the idea of homosexuality, and so I was explaining to him why the Bible is against it. It's very simple. It's not like it's, a, it's, it's not complicated, right? And it's warning us to not be deceived by the world. So my hope is for you that you realize this, all right? We're not in good standing with God. Okay, we're not in good standing with God apart from Christ. We need to be born again. We need the gospel message shared to us. You know what the gospel message is, my friend? What was your name, by the way? Ryan. Ryan? Yeah, Ryan. Ryan, I'm Adam. So I want to make sure you're paying attention. This is important. This is your soul on the line. Yeah, give me a few minutes. I appreciate it, Ryan. This message is important, okay? So, we admitted that we're sinners, that we're in need of forgiveness of our sins, and how is that applied? The gospel message, in Romans 1, it says that the gospel is the power of God on the salvation for all those who believe. So you have to have the gospel message. And this is it. It means good news for sinners like you and me, okay? Is that Christ would come, He would live the perfect life that you and I can't live. Then He would die on the cross for sinners... And then he was buried and rose again three days later, just like he said he would. And if you put your faith that he paid for your sin on the cross, you can be changed from the inside out. You can be given a new heart. You can be made alive. You're no longer dead in your sin. You can be made alive. But you have to hold on to that belief and truly hold on to it. It's not like, oh, I'm just going to believe it in my head. The Bible says that even the demons believe. They're not saved. They're trembling, the Bible says. Okay? So it's not just a head knowledge. It's a changing of the heart that you need. And you need to pick up His Word. You need to study it. You need to read it so that you can be made wise to salvation. Okay? And, and it's, this, is, this is the true reality of the world. Right? The world says, do whatever you want. Right? The world says, do whatever you want. The Bible says, you can't just do that. But if you do, your beliefs will have consequences. And then when you die, you'll stand before God and be judged according to His standards. You're lying. You're thieving. These things that are so innately known by your conscience that God has given you that are their sins and you know it to be true which is why Christ would come okay to save people like you and me from our sin but you must believe it okay it's not like you can just say hey okay I, I, I want to do it no it mean the word believe there means whole wholeheartedly emphatically following after the word that he has given us okay and these things are true okay I appreciate I appreciate it thank you very much Ryan thank you for your conversation hi ma'am how are you you believe her? God bless you, ma'am. I'm glad that you're here. Thank you. Yes, the truth being shared today, which is so hard to find, right? Well, that's what the Bible says. That's what Jesus said, right? It says that wide is the gate and wide is the path that leads to destruction, and there are many who are on it. But narrow is the gate and narrow is the path, and difficult is its way that leads to eternal life, and there are few who find it. Why? Why is that the case? Why is it the case that people, it's a, it, to find the path that leads to eternal life is so thin, so narrow, so small? Why is that the case? Because Jesus was exclusive, not inclusive. Jesus said, I am the way. He didn't say, I'm the way, Buddha's the way, science is the way. But you see, my friends, people mock the Bible. They mock the truth. They can't even have truth apart from the Bible, which is very interesting. Here's the person in their mind saying, I'm going to go do math. I'm going to go do science. Yet they deny the truth. 
that they can't know truth, that they can't have the truth. John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. So you must go through Christ and Christ alone. You can't get there any other way. You can't get there through Muhammad. You can't get there through Buddha. You can't get there through Islam. You can't get there through the false Jehovah Witnesses. You can't get there through the Mormons church. You can only get there through Jesus Christ and Christ alone. That's how you get to eternal life, my friends. But the question for you today that you need to ask yourself when you lay your head down on the pillow is are you right with God today? Are you right with God today? Because you could die today. You could die tonight. You could die tomorrow. You're appointed once to die and then face the judgment. So you're lying, you're thieving, you're blaspheming, you're dishonoring your parents. Your sexual immorality will be on display and you will be found guilty of breaking God's law. Don't die in your sin and go to a devil's hell, my friend. Turn and repent and put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and Christ alone. He's the only one who can save. There is one name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved by, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. Only through him can you have your hope, only in him, my friends, the hope to eternal life, the hope of eternal life. And this is the judgment, my friends, that the light came into the world, the light is Jesus Christ. This is the judgment that the light has come into the world, but men and women love the darkness and hate the light. They love the darkness because their deeds are evil. And anyone who does evil hates the light and they won't go to the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. When you run into the light of Jesus Christ, your deeds are exposed. Your sin debt is great. Your sin debt is in need of forgiveness. And you can't do it alone or any other way, friends. And it's through Christ and Christ alone. So call upon his name today, friends, that you may have eternal life. The life is in his Son. All those who have the Son have eternal life. Those who do not have the Son of God do not have life. And I have written these things to you so that you may know, which means you may have certainty that you have eternal life because you have the Son of God. See, when you become a Christian, friends, You've been born again. When you become a Christian, you can have eternal life. And this is in, only in Jesus Christ. So you want eternal life? You want to be able to live? Otherwise, what are you, what's the purpose in life? Why are you even walking around? Are you a complete nihilist, maybe? You'd be more consistent if you were a complete nihilist. Where nothing matters. Because if you hold to an evolutionary worldview, that's exactly how you should be thinking. That nothing actually matters. Okay? So, don't be inconsistent, hold to an evolutionary worldview, and then not be a nihilist. You better be a nihilist where nothing actually matters. But friends, ladies and gentlemen, you don't live that way. You don't live as if nothing matters. You believe that it's a good thing to have a birthday party for your little nephew or something. You believe it's good to do right. But oh my friends, only the Christian can be consistent and say that black lives matter. No one, else, no, no one else's worldview can actually say black lives matter and be consistent and actually can account for why black lives matter. They turn from that and they just say it, but they can't justify it, right? And as a Christian, I can tell you why black lives matter. Black lives matter because all people were made in the image of God. Black people, white people, Asian people, we've all been created in the image of God. So as a Christian, I can tell you why black lives matter. As a non-Christian, you can't even say black lives matter and be consistent. That's terrifying, friends. Here you are, running down the street, having mantras about why life matters, when you believe you're a cosmic accident that came from the stardust to what you are today. So my friends, turn and repent of your sin. Don't mock your sin. Don't laugh and think that you're good with God because you're not. You need to be right with God. And it's through His Son, Jesus Christ. So there's no justification for life apart from God. There's no justification for science apart from God. There's no justification for any of those things. And you may laugh, but you can't stand in your claims. Right? People make claims, but they can't stand in them. That's why they're kind of cowardice. They're kind of afraid to stand in their claims when they walk on. They can't stand in it. I would, I would appreciate anybody who's got enough, uh, you know, courage to stand in their claims and why they believe that they actually matter apart from the Christian God. See, 
We hold to an absolute standard of morality. We hold to an absolute standard of truth. And that is the Word of God. Apart from the Word of God, my friends, you can't justify why it's wrong to murder. You can't justify why it's wrong to rape. You can't justify why it's wrong to steal. You don't have a moral justification for anything apart from the God of the Bible. Unless you want to try to impose another deity, well, then I'll show how your other deity is inconsistent, self-refuting. As in, anyone who's outside of Christ and their worldview is inconsistent. So come, engage with the, the gospel preacher on how you can find eternal life today. That you don't have to die in your sin. That you don't have to die as a criminal in the eyes of an eternal holy God. But that you can have your sins forgiven by the righteous King of Kings who would live the life that you and I can't live. Don't die in your sin today, my friends. Come and be blessed by the truth of God's Word. How about you, my friends? Are you right with God today? Have you thought about that? What makes you right with God? Have you thought about that? So you can't be made right with God apart from His Word, His Gospel message, the truth that Christ would come and die on the cross. You can't be made right with God, my friends, apart from Jesus Christ. It's not like your good deeds are being weighed on some cosmic scale with your wickedness, with your evilness. See, there is no such thing as a good person. You're not a good person. People claim that I'm good. People claim that I, I am a moral, upright person. But my response to that is that you don't know me very well then. Because I'm not good. That's why I need Christ. And you're not good. No matter what Disney tries to tell you. No matter what your parents try to tell you. No matter how much people pat you on the back. You're not a good person in the eyes of a holy, righteous God. You're not. You're not. You're the criminal. You're God's enemy today, apart from Jesus Christ. It says that all those who make themselves a friend of the world make themselves an enemy of God. You're an enemy of God today, and you should be terrified. The Bible says that the preaching of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. You're perishing outside of Jesus Christ. Don't perish. Don't die in your sin, friends. Don't die in your sin. How about you, my friends? Are you right with God today? Have you thought about that? What makes you right with God? If you were to die today, stand before Him. See, are you a Christian today? Are you Christians? Christians? What's stopping you from becoming a Christian? Here's the Christian standing on a street corner, willing to engage with all comers, willing to engage with multiple different worldviews, and yet no one is able to stand in their claims. So I want, no, oh, my friend, I care for your soul too much. Come and engage with me if you really want me to go. Yeah, see, I didn't think so. See, they can't. There's no way to justify everything that they claim they know because they're self-refuting. Their whole worldview is self-refuting. So Jesus came to set you free from your sin and irrational thinking. See, you can have rational thinking with Jesus Christ. But if you die in your sin, it'll be a bad day for you if you heard the truth today about how you can have your sins forgiven. It'll be a bad day for you if you died in your sin after the gospel message has been preached to you. It'll be a bad day for you when you stand before God and be judged according to His standards and not mine, and not your own, and not society. You see, Jesus came to set the captives free, those who were weighed down by their sin debt. He says, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So that conscience that you have within you, that beats you up, that tells you you're wrong, that tells you you've got sin, that tells you and beats you up in the darkness of the day. In the, in the darkness of the night, where you feel bad the day after the night and the bar hopping that goes on. When you feel bad the next day about the things you've done, Jesus says, come to me and I will give you rest. And I will not cast you out. Come to me and no wise will I cast you out, he says. So go to Christ if you want to live. If you want to continue in your sin, if you want to continue mocking the truth, if you want to continue in your inability to rationally understand the universe, understand life, understand where moral standards come from, understand any of those things, you'll never be able to make sense of any of these things apart from Jesus Christ. So when Jesus says, come to me, he's telling you to die to yourself. He's telling you to lay down your desires and to pick up your cross and follow after him. He says, those who put their hand to the plow and look back, they're not fit for the kingdom. He says, those who love their mother or father more than me are not worthy of me. Those who love their son or daughter more than me, meaning Jesus, you're not worthy of me. 
It says, let those people pick up their cross and follow after me. And then he will be worthy on that day. It says, those who deny me, Jesus says in Matthew. It says, those who deny me before men, I will also deny him before my Father who is in heaven. But those who profess me before men, I will also profess them before my Father who is in heaven. And they will be saved. They will be blessed. They will say, come. He will say to them, come and be blessed, faithful servants. So my friends, I care for your souls. Don't die in your sin today. Don't die. Don't walk away. Don't harden your heart. Know that you can have your sins forgiven, that you can be made new. Know that there's the love and the mercy of, and the grace of God that can set you free. Know that there's hope, but it's only in Jesus. So on the day that you stand before God and that you're judged according to His standards, God doesn't judge you because He sees Christ's robe of righteousness wrapped around you and you can be forgiven of your sin. He shows that He knows God. It's amazing, right? The hardest people who kick and, and buck... And yeah. In the Bible. Where the fuck are all the tens of billions of planets? What about the planets? Where are all the planets in the Bible? Yeah, Genesis 1. The very first... The very first... The very first verse of the Bible says that God created the heavens and the, and the earth. Hello? I mean, it's not like it's that hard. How about you guys? How do you take into account the... Uh, yes, good question. What was your name? How do you take into account the genocide of Native Americans? Okay, the genocide of Native Americans. Is that what you're asking about? Okay, I want to make sure I get your question right. Before I answer your question, I have to get to why, why, in your worldview, is genocide wrong? Why is genocide wrong? Yeah, I, as a Christian, I can say genocide is wrong. But if you're not a Christian, and you have a different worldview, you can't justify why that's wrong. Please, give it to me. That answers my question. Yeah, so ge genocide is wrong, right? And I would agree with you. Jesus says that he took the sword out of the church, so Christians don't go around, right, trying to murder people. So if somebody was doing that, guess what? They're going against God's word, and they're not Christian. So that has nothing to do with Christianity, my friends. That has to do with the wickedness of men. Right. No, no, sir. But God doesn't murder anybody, right? God has the right to kill everyone because of, because of sin. God kills everyone. God kills everyone. He doesn't murder anyone, though, because when God takes his life back from you or from me, that's called justice. Because everyone has sinned, and everyone has fallen short of the glory of God. And the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. That's why people die, my friends, because of your sin. So, you can't... A minute ago, we had a gentleman who came up here and wanted to ask about the genocide of Native Americans, right? As if he has a standard to say that uh, murdering... Native Americans or murdering anybody is wrong, objectively. But in his worldview, he can't justify why murder is wrong. The only way you can know why murder is wrong is based on the Christian Bible, okay? The Christian God of the Bible is the one who gives us an absolute standard of morality by where we can judge something to be right or wrong, like murder. I'd rather you be bold in what your beliefs are not be somebody who's ashamed of their beliefs, but come and say it, stand in your beliefs. Challenge the Christian, right? That's why he's here. He's here to challenge worldviews, try to expose truth. Right? How about you, gentlemen? You right with God today? Oh, you are? On what basis are you right with God? What's that? I didn't hear you. You don't have any basis for why you're right with God? It's an object, some subjective, arbitrary claim? No, my friend, you need to know why you're right with God. <laughs> Yeah, okay, how about you guys? You right with God today? Uh, you did your what? Yeah, you did your classes? Is that what you said? I didn't hear what you said. Sorry, ma'am. If you really want to have an articulate and conversation, you know, I'm here for you. How about you, my friend? Are you right with God today? I'm right with God every day. How do you know that? Because he's in my heart. How is he in your heart? How would he be? Well, because he's not in everyone's heart. We're not all the children of God. Right? John 1 says, only those who are appointed have been able and received have been called the child. What's that? God did, sir. God did. Through men. Through men. How about you, my friend? You right with God today? Yeah, sir. Sir. Oh, okay. Well, come back in again. How about you, my friend? You right with God today? Well, 
an atheist, so I'm apparently... Ah, uh, okay. I, well, I appreciate you trying to say that you're an atheist or holding to that. Are you brave enough to not run away and have an engaging conversation I, with the Christian? I have like 15 minutes, but only if you turn down the microphone. I'll, I'll turn it this way for you so I don't blow out your eardrums. How's that? All right. So the Bible says that there is no such thing as an atheist. I see that you, you're here autonomously. You exist. But your claims are self-refuting. And everything you do presupposes the Christian God of the Bible. Even your science that you do. What's your, are you a major... What you got a ma major in? Uh, business. <laughs> okay, well, not so much in it. Not a lot of science in that one. I, I hear you. That's good. That's good. Um, but there's, but, uh, so, so the Bible states there's no atheists. That's right. Romans 1, and I'll tell you where it says that. It says Romans 1, it says that everyone knows that God exists, but some suppress the truth of God in their unrighteousness, and that we are without an excuse. Everyone is without an excuse. All apologetus in the Greek. But, but that's a, how is this claim founded? I mean, it's a yeah. theory, sure. Okay, but. so there's, and, and it even answers that question. See, the Apostle Paul, he's not just coming up with ideas in his head. He's the one who wrote the book of Romans. These are inspired words from the Holy Spirit but given to him from God, and I'll answer it. says yep. that God inspired him? Uh, well, the, the Bible is self-attesting. Okay, and it's an absolute authority, and, and you might say, hey, wait a minute, that's circular logic, right? You probably might say that. Is all circular logic absol always absolutely fallacious? No, but most. Okay, but no, but most, and I would agree with you. So how can circular logic not be fallacious? Um, circular logic is not is fallacious in the cases when it's proposing wild claims or in general very well very, that would be let me put it brave claims. okay okay so. let me let me let me help you out with your epistemology here okay how do we know anything for certainty we'll get to that in a minute but the reason why the bible is true yeah. is because if it wasn't you couldn't prove anything to be true so that's right that's right and i'll show you i'll expose very that to you bold. that's right it's a very bold claim but that's why it's the word of god right it's not some right Proclaim. So here, here's how I, here's how circular logic is not always fallacious. Okay. okay. If I told you I was the strongest man in the world, you might look at me and think that, but it's not true. But if let's say I made the claim, right, and you said, okay, prove it, but don't use your strength. No, that's not that's not possible. Exactly. It's the same thing though with the Word of God, because this comes from the absolute standard of of all things, morality. Hold on. Because it comes from that, okay, to make the claim that this is true because it says it's true is the same thing as me saying that I'm, I'm the strongest man and you're telling me I can't use this to prove it, right? So, do you understand what I'm saying? So because this makes the claim, that's not because it's true, it makes the claim because it is the absolute authority that by which you can know something to be true. But, I have a question. Yeah, all right, sure. Yes, it, it's kind of a play on words. All right, so by saying an opioid, what is the definition of an opioid? Great, it dulls the conscience. It says, hey, guess what? I can do whatever I want. There's no objective standard by which I have to live morality by. Do you believe that humans... Okay, I'm curious now. Yeah. Do you believe that humans are naturally, like, evil? Without, so are you saying without God, without... If, if you didn't believe in God, or let's say um, you had a revelation, like, hypothetically, purely, there was no God. You would just run around murdering people and do whatever the fuck you want, like it's the purge? Well, no. That's not what I'm saying. May I intersect here? They also do that if God exists. Yes, they, that's, that's, that's true. I would agree with you there. It, the Christian position is not that you... Which, which Christians, by the way? Protestant, Catholics? Well, Catholics aren't Christians. So only yeah, the people yeah. who hold to the Bible. Catholics don't hold to the Bible. They add to the Bible, number one. Oh, uh, oh yeah. Catholics, oh, yeah. They add... Oh, sure. Sure. There's any real Catholic, when I ask them about Christianity, there's, yeah, yeah, Catholics and Christians, we separate that. Because they know the difference. Here or... Anywhere. If they're real Christian, or I'm sorry, if they're real Catholics, okay? Uh, hold on, hold on a second. He's asking a very good question, and I'll answer your question, I promise, if you stick around. Okay? So here's the issue. Christian position is not that because you deny God, therefore you don't have morals. 
The fact is, even though you deny God, you borrow from the Christian God in order to understand morality. Otherwise, you couldn't justify morality. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't be rude. She was asking a good question. And you already had your chance. You, you came, you flipped the preacher off, and then you walked off. Oh my God, fuck you. Exactly. So this is why I don't engage with muckers. Who the fuck is that? What do yeah, you he doesn't even know the definition of mucker. Okay. Oh, mucker is someone who who laughs and he doesn't actually have an intelligent conversation. He doesn't he doesn't have the ability to have an intellectual conversation like this young man was. Okay. So. You no, know, I'm not. I'm. This is called preaching, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. They dull the senses. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so I'm not saying it in the literal sense. What is the brain cells being messed up? Hold on a second. What do the brain cells happen? If you, do, if you do all that to your brain cells, it numbs the senses, right? Even in a controlled environment, they're giving you an opioid to numb the senses, to numb your reality. That's exactly what atheism does to people who deny God because now they don't have that standard. They can run them up, which is why the Bible says that in Ephesians 4.17, by the way, it says, do not continue to walk around like the Gentiles in the futility of your mind. When you deny God, you deny any absolute standard of morality. You deny science. You deny all those things, right? That's, that's the best he's got. That's the best he has is a logical fallacy called an ad hominem of attack. Right? I'm not even doing that. Yes. Wait, wait, wait. It's his turn. To be fair. To be fair. Yes. I was wondering if you support LGBTQ. Support in what way? Uh, I think it's okay. Uh, it's not what I think, it's what the Bible says. And so the Bible says that homosexuality is a sin. It says it's a sin against God. It says that it's unrighteous. And that you can be saved from that sin just like you can be saved from your lying, from your thieving, from your dishonoring your parents. It's just another sin in the book. Not really. No, it's not. Hold on. Hold. Yeah, 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 yes. What about the, I can look it up the lines, but it's basically saying if you have the, if you have a homosexual and you encounter it, it's like paid in, to be paid in blood. So. Okay, okay, that's a good question. That's a good question. So that's, we're going to, we're going to do a couple things here. We're going to talk about the old covenant and the new covenant. You're talking about the old testament yeah. and I'm talking about the new testament. Okay. That's also the, part of the Bible. The, you're right. And to understand how that plays out is you have to understand the theocracy that God set up for the people of Israel. Okay? We're no longer in a theocracy. Why? Because the Messiah came, and when the Messiah came, it says that he fulfilled the Old Testament. He didn't do away with it, he fulfilled the Old Testament. And so, because he fulfilled the Old Testament, that the 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 requirement to hold to the Old Testament laws, like judicial laws, the ceremonial laws, like where they had to go and sacrifice a, a bull and goats and all that stuff, where they their their uh, their uh, dietary laws, all those things are no longer in effect for the Christian today, right? But morally, morally, that still holds through. The moral law of God does not step down because God entered into creation through Jesus Christ. In Jesus Christ, he's God. When he came into the world, he lived the perfect life that none of us could do, right? We don't have the ability to live the perfect life that Jesus did. He wasn't born with the sin nature. You've probably heard of the, um, the uh, 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 being born of a virgin, right? You've probably heard that and you're like, oh, that's probably an outrageous claim, right? But that's what happened. He wasn't born by man's seed, so he doesn't have the federal head that Adam and Eve gave all of us. So we all have sin. Right? I know I'm going through a lot of different stuff, but I'm trying to give you as much information as I can. So, the reason why it's wrong in the New Testament, still, like homosexuality, the reason why that's still wrong is because the Bible is clear that the moral law is, is, is absolute. It, it reflects the thinking and the moral standard that we have in God. And it says it at least three different times in the New Testament, talking specifically about homosexuality. And he, wait, here's, here's one passage. Okay. So wait. Today, not the themes the morality, the morality standards do now the payment the payment for morality is also different why in the Old Testament your payment was death in the New Testament Christ died so that you can be forgiven okay for no 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 that's a good I'm glad you brought that up that's a very crucial point when Jesus says in John 10 he says I lay down my life for the sheep 
Not everyone is a sheep. I have a question about homosexuality. Yes. So the Bible says man shall not land with man, right? It does. It doesn't say anything about women, so I can still fuck my girlfriend. Wrong. Actually, it does say that. Romans where? 1. Where? Here we go. Where? Romans 1. Where? Romans 1. Where? Romans 1. I will read it to you oh, verbatim. You. Ready? You ready for this? Okay. For, and this is a judgment of God on our nation, by the way. This is why it's running rampant right now. It says, for this reason, God delivered them over to disgraceful passions. So remember, that's number one, disgraceful passions. Their women exchanged the natural sexual relations for unnatural ones. The men, in the same way, left the natural relations with women and were inflamed in their lust for one another, men committing shameless acts with men, receiving in their own person the appropriate penalty of their error. You know, things like monkeypox. <laughs> Well, so first off, in the animal kingdom, we're not animals. Who let the dogs I know you might out? think that we're animals, but we're not, right? We're created differently Who than let the animals the dogs are. Out? Because that's showing dominance. That's a little bit different. They don't have any desire in the sense of being one with their person. It's not because of love, quote unquote, right? It's not because of lust, right? It's because they're showing dominance. That's what happens in the animal kingdom. It's not what happens in the human world because humans, number one, aren't driven only by instinct, right? That's why we have so many wars, it's for dominance. That's not instinct, that's not instinct. That's called greed. That's called, that's called the wickedness of men's hearts. That's not the same thing. No, it's not an instinct. That's a, that's a moral issue. Okay? Animals don't have moral Who issues. Okay, so carry back. So these are the morale. Who let the dogs out? Of the Old I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Start over again. I really want to hear what you have to say, but that's a little hard. Thank you very much for your questions. I appreciate it. Moral themes of the Old Testament can still carry through today. That's right, that's right. Okay, but the Old Testament condones slavery. So The Old condones it? Yeah, God laid down rules, so I'm slaves. Okay, hold on a minute. Okay, when we use the word slave, what slave definition are you using here? One man controlling another. That's not what it is in the Old Testament. Then, yeah. Well, Matter of fact, the slavery, like chattel slavery, like we had in you know Africa and to the U.S., that type of slavery is condemned in the Old Testament as well. It's called man stealing. It's different. But the slavery that was referred to then is more like indentured servanthood. I think it's a. Hold on a second. I think it's incredibly gracious of God in the barbaric world in the Middle East that it was at that time, that if your nation was taken over, that there was rules that you would have to abide by under the nation of God, okay? If they were left to their own devices, they would probably be murdered, they would be raped, they would, be, they would starve to death, but when you were then therefore taken into the kingdom of God, or I should say not the kingdom of God, but the, the, the Israel camp, right? Yeah. You were given a lot of rights. As a matter of fact, if you were mistreated, there was rules against mistreating the people that were under your care. So it's very gracious of God to establish a standard, quote unquote, slavery in the Old Testament for people who are no longer going to have to, you know, wander around the wilderness and be worried about getting slaughtered or raped or any of these other things with the other barbaric issues that were going on there. So it's a, it's a gracious thing. God said to murder every man, woman, and child. Wait, okay. Well, hold on. So. In, in, in that standard, right, we're talking about a moral standard now, okay? okay? Moral standard of God is that every soul that sins will die. God determines how that death comes by. So if you're a nation that's rampant against the truth of God, rampant against God's laws, rampant against God's people, de 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 uh, rebelling against God, if he sends his people in to demolish you and you end up dying in that, then that's God's judgment. And Israel, Israel, Israel also had that happen against them. Remember, they didn't follow God's law, and so guess who took over them? The, the um, uh, why, why can't I remember the name of it now? It's escaping me. No, uh, Babylon. Babylon came in and took over Israel, and they were captive, right? And so they didn't follow the law of God either, and they were murdered, and they were not murdered, they were killed, right? God doesn't murder anybody, right? Murder is the unjust taking of human life. Like abortion. But God okay. has no justification. God oh no, God is. God has self claimed justification. If I murder you, just as an example, oh, no, I'm not. No. <laughs> yes, and please don't do that. You are still on camera. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Look at me. <laughs> Um, yeah. But if I murder you and I say I, it was justified, that's exactly the same thing. No, because you're not eternally holy in justice. You have sin. If I say that, sure, because that's exactly the same thing. But what standard? Who says, except 
for God himself yes. that he is holy and that's right the standard. God has that right no yes he does because he, why do you judge God why, why shouldn't I because you are a created being he is not a created being he is the eternal holy just and righteous God but when he says something is morally right it doesn't matter if it's self-claiming it's not even self-claiming it's a triune God Oh now, yeah. so there's so there's witnesses. So we have yes. so we have yes. independent sources. Well, they're referred to as persons, yeah, right? Sure. One God, but referred to as persons. And why is that even necessary? I'll tell you why. Like in the Muslim faith, okay, in the Muslim faith, they have a Unitarian God, okay, one God. What's the problem with that? That then therefore demands that that singular God is dependent on his own creation to be able to love to be able to punish, to be able to be personal. That's why the God of Islam doesn't exist. It's a triune God of the God of the Bible, exactly like he says he is. Right in the very beginning he says, and God said, let us make man in our own image. There's a representation of the Trinity right there. Right? And then it says, and he created. So it goes from singular to plural, to plural to singular again. So, I mean, the Bible is replete with how it exposes the triune nature of God. So, I mean, I, it's not that I have the answers to everything. It's just that I believe what this says. It's not even because I believe it. That doesn't make something true. This is true whether I'm here or not, right? That's your belief. The beliefs do not dictate reality, my friends. So my belief doesn't oh, change thing, truth. Do you, you, you know about a little thing called pa papal states? And uh -huh, uh -huh. I don't know what's it called in, in English. The, like the... Mar the the Spanish Inquisition? Among others, yeah. the murdering in Europe. Yeah. In the Beliefs also the have they have consequences, but they don't change or dictate truth. You see what I'm saying? Truth is absolute. Truth. truth is absolute. If I if every I truth the example, if I stab you, whether whatever <laughs> what, what was your name by the way? Robert. Robert and your name? Elizabeth. Elizabeth and Robert, thank you for the conversation. So, I appreciate it. You have to go? Or? No. Okay. No. Um, so, if I stab you, like, whatever my intention, like, like uh, you, I can say whatever is my reason for it. Okay. Is, so, I make truth. I see, what, I see what you're saying. Right, 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 you have a fact. reason. Yeah. Fact, though, yeah. facts are based off of truth. Facts presuppose truth. You can't have a fact that's not true. So fundamentally, in epistemology, yeah. truth is absolute. It's not subjective. A claim. It's claimed absolute. Which it is. is or it's not, right? Because if it is, if you can have two opposing truth claims by subjective people and their thoughts both be true, even though they're opposing, guess what? You just violated the law of non-contradiction. That's no, a law of logic. No, that's perspective. That's not no, 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 no. Because that could be partial truth on one side or the other. But that's not what I said. If you have two opposing truth claims, they both can't be true. Right? I can't be here yeah. and in New York at the exact same time, the exact same place. That's an impossibility. That's the law of non-contradiction. No, that's existence. That's not truth. If I, yeah, if that's I, called the law of non-contradiction. If I look at the, let's take this. This thing. beautiful cone here, yeah, caution so, cone. So, you know. Yes. So if I look at the thing, it's yes. a triangle. I forgot the term for pyramid. cone. Upside down cone. Pyramid. It's not really a pyramid. If I, may I, if, if you, you look it? through this thing, okay. yes, without seeing the outside, yes, you, you see a pipe or a that's cylinder. a perspective. I get yeah. you. So that doesn't say that doesn't say that two opposing truths are different. That's just saying that you had a limited ability to know truth. But like, and I would agree you, with that. That's that yes, I agree with you. I'm not saying that. I am saying that the only way you can here here's a good thing for you guys to noodle on. You can only have truth by two ways. You ready? Either one, you know all things, and I would admit that we don't know all things. Or two, you've been given revelation from somebody who does know all things. So that's how you know God exists, because you make knowledge claims, you make truth claims. Apart from that, you could be wrong about everything you claim to know, is that correct? Why, so why are the people that claim to, get, uh, to have received revelations, yeah. why are they not false? Well, because they didn't believe the Bible. They, they cannot be faulty because they be, believe or didn't believe the Bible? They didn't believe the Bible, so therefore they are faulty. Okay. In, in Hebrews 1, yeah. the Bible clearly tells us that God's not giving us new revelation. He says, in times past, meaning the Old Testament, He spoke to us through prophets, He spoke to us in many different ways. But in today, thank you for that, showing off the wickedness of your heart, I appreciate it. Um, that today, 
right? He speaks to us through his son, Jesus Christ. And we have his account in his word, in his word, right? He is dead. Oh, and he's not dead anymore. He was dead. He was buried, rose again, just like he said he would, right? And now he reigns and he sits at the right hand of the Father, where he's waiting to come and return. Sounds boring. Well, it, it's, trust me, it won't be. Maybe you're saying boring for him? Yeah. Oh, well, he's he's very busy, actually, because he's interceding for this for his saints like me he intercedes for our prayers right he intercedes for us that's what the bible says and he's still saving people today right so if you call upon his name you can be saved too right from your sin so the, here's the point all right why am i even out here why am i confronting worldviews why am i confronting truth right because jesus himself said in john 14 6 that i am the way the truth and the life you can't get to the Father any other way. That's but here's the promise. Very bold he, to yeah, claim. that's right. So either Jesus was crazy and a liar, or he was telling the truth, right? So what? So what makes the makes the position? Or I like bubbles. Where are they coming from? It's not from you, right? <laughs> uh, so what makes the claim that he's absolute? Yeah. Less crazy than the one that he's just whack. You know? why, why, okay, why is the claim to be the truth, yeah. right? Again, the Christian position, the answer, you may not like it, but it's because of the impossibility of the contrary. So it's impossible that he was crazy. That's right. Why? Because of the impossibility of the contrary. If all other possibilities, how, how what is it? I hear, here, here's how it goes, right? Uh, and I'll give you an analogy or, or an, a historical example, okay? Uh, uh, Aristotle was asked by some of his students, how do you prove the law of non-contradiction is real? Okay, the minute he says, here's how you do it. The minute you try to deny that logical law, you're using that logical law. The minute you try to deny truth, the minute you try to deny Jesus Christ, the minute you try to make a moral claim, the minute you try to do science, the minute you try to do anything in God's world, in God's reality, you're borrowing from the Christian worldview to make sense of anything. So it's by the impossibility of the contrary. Give me another worldview that you can make sense of reality, you can make sense of truth, and then we'll have a conversation. But that's a very narcissistic approach to say everything. Wait, 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 hold on a second. What's not, not in, personally again in your world in your worldview, why is narcissism wrong? It's a sin, isn't it? Well that now you're pointing back to the Christian worldview. Sure. Right? That do you believe the Christian worldview? No. Okay, so why are you making an argument for something you don't believe? I mean we could stand here and talk about because the moon the being made of green cheese. Story. Is borrowing right? values from from yep. the nature law, yep. not the other way yep. around. And if you could make an argument at all on why it's wrong, you're borrowing from my worldview. That's self-refuting for no, yourself. Morality. But where does that come morality from? Morality is absolutely rational. If there were agreed, I agree with you. But in your worldview, where does rationality come from? What moral standard do you have? Our own. Okay. <laughs> okay. No so you, do you realize standard. you just refuted your argument? Why? Because you just said. I just asked you, you said it's absolute, right? You said it was absolute, and then the very next minute I say, well, it's subjective. Yeah, you said morality, yeah. right, right, is an absolute. No. Now, yes, you did. No, it's, it's subjective. Okay, so now morality is subjective. It is. Okay, that's your claim. Okay, so when somebody down the street yeah. has their own subjective ideas of about of morality, yeah. it's acceptable to go rape somebody. You have no stance over that person with their moral claims. You just have your own. So you can't go do anything about it. You can't even call the cops. See? You could, right? But why? You don't have any moral claim over him. He's just acting on his own moral claims. So where does that moral standard come from? It can't be subjective only. Well, it's the agreed upon one. Okay, so here we go. And this Democracy. Is, you know, look, it's not my first day on the street corner, yeah. right? I've heard this. This is exactly how it always goes for those who deny the Christian worldview, okay? They first, they start with a subjective claim. I'm like, oh, no, no, I don't like that. So now they have to go back and say, oh, it's what society says. No, it's, it's still subjective. It's an agreed upon. Okay, an agreed morality. subjective set of morality, which is based on what society would agree, agree with. Well, society is just yeah, so there you, there, a multitude of Okay, there you go. So it's society based now, okay? Right. So why now I, as a Christian, I have an answer for all of this because it's a Christian worldview. That's a very okay? Christian thing to do. Because it well well that's because of the moral standard that we all have. You just happen to deny that. You think it's now it's based off of society's collaborative uh, subjective claim. Alright? Now, 
Let's hold to that consistency as well, just like we did with the subjective impersonal, right? We didn't have any right to go over to Nazi Germany and tell them not to murder Jews, according to your standard. Well, as a German, that's a really bold <laughs> thing to claim. Well, I'm just saying, as Americans... And, and, and fun fact, that would be illegal over there, just saying. Yeah, I know, I know, but I'm just saying, yeah. as a society over here, well, according to your standard, we didn't have an ability to go over there because that's that society. Oh no, you, you, that's not you what might hold have on, a hold moral on. legitimization. You still have the ability. Agreed. I agree. I agree. But no one is able to say that this society's view is better than this society's view. You have your own view. And so now, when society finally goes and it's going to get there, I'm not kidding you. This is this is going to happen. I'm not a prophet. I'm just telling you how this works, okay? The definition of a prophet. No, no, no. Okay, this is my hypothesis about what's going to happen okay. based off of logical conclusion of what the word says, okay? Okay? Yes, it could be a theory, right? Um, so we've seen the, the depravity within regards to sexuality continue to decline, just like it says in Romans 1. The very next thing you're going to see now is that pedophilia becomes acceptable. Oh, uh, uh, we're getting bald again. You want to you wanna argue that? Sure. Go to the person in Montreal, go to the professor in Montreal, and ask him why he is holding lectures for why pedophilia is just another sexual orientation. Or why don't you go to your YouTube channel and look up TED Talk Pedophilia, and there's a lady who gets on stage and makes an argument why pedophilia is just another sexual orientation, and at the very end of her talk, rousing applause from everyone sitting there. You tell me. It's gonna happen. And if you can say today that it's morally wrong, just give it 20 years. I guarantee you, it's going to get to the point where things like Cuties on Netflix, which they lost a lot of money on, by the way, is going to be the halftime show at the Super Bowl. Watch. And that's exactly why the Bible is true, because everything anybody ever says proves it to be true. No, 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 no. Watch your mouth. Watch your mouth. No, see, that's exactly what it is. He hates God. That's why he's acting. Fuck out of here. That's called assault, sir. I wouldn't want to do that. You're on camera. So I'm here because I love you. I don't hate you. You know, even though you hate me. No, man, I love you. If you are correct, then you can stand down and see eye to eye to women. Yeah. Well, that this is pragmatic. Just ask me. Yeah. Put down the bird and pick up your Bible, sir. See, that just shows the depravity. That's why I'm here. I'm here for people like that, people like you, for all people, because I love them and I want them to be saved. I don't want them to die in their sin. Okay. Right? I want them to be forgiven of their sin. I'm the, I'm the best friend here today. Right? Even though he, people act out like that because the same what they did to Jesus. But aren't you clean? So I, I'm sorry to interrupt. Yes, ma'am. I actually live here. Okay. I've got a kid that's trying to take a nap. Okay. Can you go do this where you live? Oh, I do. Well, would you do that, please? Because I don't need this. Well, everyone needs this. Yeah, no, actually that's not. That's your claim. Well, that's the Bible's claim. What, what's with the ladder? Oh, this is called pragmatic, right? And it's for my safety and yours. I can knock you right off of that. Of course. I don't think that's very safe, Of course. Actually. It is, actually, because I can see things coming and I can jump down. Okay. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't advise doing that. That wouldn't be very nice. I wouldn't advise you staying down here much longer. Because Why? Because I am getting really annoyed. Well, I hope you repent and believe the truth. Is there truth. anything about um, respecting your elders uh, in, in that book? Is there of co anything of about course, that? but not to God haters, no. Uh, why are you calling me a God hater? You don't know me. Oh, sure I do. Oh, yeah. you think you know me? I know what the Bible says about you. You don't even know me. Sure I do. By your actions, by your fruit, you're producing fruit right now. You're a bad tree. If you were really a believer, look, yeah. Look, you have a good time up there playing tree. I, okay, my kid's trying you. to nap. Okay, well, I hope they have a great nap. Well, they will when you shut the fuck up. Okay, well, that will be in another couple hours. Oh. Or the Lord takes me home. One of the two. Okay, so I want to circle back to something you said. I would, love to, I would love to hear okay, it. you said Catholicism isn't... Christianity. Christi yes, That's why? right. Why? Because they taint the gospel. They they murdered the gospel. They murdered, the, how did they murder the gospel? <laughs> I'm using it, it as a harsh word, okay? Uh, the Apostle Paul in the book of Galatians, even early church churches, right? Church plants were having issues with the solid gospel. He even writes to them, you foolish Galatians, why did you walk from the simplicity of the gospel? This is in Galatians 1, you can read it, okay? The gospel, if you taint the gospel, it's no longer saving, it's damnable. And what they have done is they took the grace of God, the love of God, and added works to it.
So they say it's not by faith and grace alone, but you have to do faith and grace plus works. But what's the difference to the New, to the new Testament? Okay, the, the, that, that's also hold on, hold on. Christians don't say, hey, you don't have to do good works, but it's not meritorial. The good works follow somebody who has been saved. They make it part of salvation. So most of the time, I say 98% of the time, when I ask my Christian, my, my Catholic friends, I will say, hey, uh, do you know if you died today that you would go to heaven? Their answer is no, because they have more works that they have to do. But the Bible's clear in 1 John chapter 5. It says, I've written these things to you who have the Son of God so that you may know for certainty. You may know you have eternal life. So it's not a question anymore. So they're denying the clear scriptures that are, and even in Titus 3, it says, in Titus 3, it says, we're saved apart from works of righteousness that we have done. It's a warning, sir, not a threat. It yeah. was used as a threat in many historical occasions. Uh, if, well, if you, under Catholicism, under Catholicism, I would agree with you. If you don't follow our interpretation of the Bible, it's, yeah. it's a sin. Okay. And as, as the interpretation of the Bible yeah. is always a um, How do you get, how, how do you solve that? Sorry? How do you solve that issue of interpretation? You know how? The scripture, as an absolute standard, always interprets itself. Scripture interprets scripture. The Bible even tells us the. What's that? The scripture can read. This is like an. No, no, that's not what I mean. Like in one passage, it'll say something. In another passage, it'll say the same thing. For instance, like we were just talking, Titus three says about apart from works of righteousness. There's another verse that says the same thing, only in a totally different epistle. Right? In Ephesians 2, it says we've been saved by the grace of God, not by works that anyone has done, lest we boast of ourselves. It's a free gift of God. So everything it has when it comes to the critical issues and doctrines for Christianity in the Bible, it'll always point back to itself as its own authority from different authors, even from different passages, from different time eras. That's why this is such a unique quote unquote book. It's not a book. It's 66 written by over 40 different authors in over, you know, like 1500 year time span. And guess what? It all points to the same person. Jesus Christ. So that's a good point. The Bible is a compilation of different works, but some of them didn't make the cuts. I got point five. Ah, that's a very good question. That's a great question. They make the cuts. Right? Okay. So there's a certain thing called the in, the the um, authentic, uh, authenticity of the Spirit of God. Okay. So these things, those certain books, show clear contradictions with the rest of them. The ones that don't show contradictions are not admissible because they clearly are against what the Spirit of God was saying. So it's just a man's idea. But who decided that? What's that? Who decided? <clears throat> okay. Well, first off, first off, in the New Testament, right? There's a lot of there's epistles by the Apostle Paul, and there's epistles by Peter and other other people. So Paul points to Peter and his epistles as scripture, says it. And Peter does the exact same with Paul's, right? But there's no mention of anything else like the Gospel of, of um, Thomas. There's no any of these other books that are out there. Now, if you want to read them, go for it. But you're going to see the contradictions within them that show and don't line up with the rest of what God's Word is. So it's 66 books over a period of 1,500 years, right? And matter of fact, something you might find interesting that shows more reasoning to why the Bible is, is, is accurate. So we had a, a Bible at a certain point in time. Then they found the Dead Sea Scrolls. You've heard of that? Those predated, those predated what we already had. So they were older. And then we, they compared what we had currently and what they had written before Jesus even walked the earth. There's only the Old Testament. It was so clear and so accurate that the little issues that were like, oh, okay, I can't tell what that letter is. The, the difference is nil. It's like reading the King James versus the New, New American Standard. There's really no difference at all, especially with regards to doctrine. So I, I haven't done a extreme thorough say I'm not a scholar, but there are scholars who do this, right? And I, and I guess I do have to take a little bit of faith in what they say. But today, it's, it's 2022. You could go to the internet and download Bible programs that allow you to see the original Hebrew, the original Greek, and then you could do a study. You can learn to read Hebrew and Koine Greek if you want. 
right? It's not like it's a question anymore. Smarter men than me, smarter men than you, ladies, smarter ladies than you, have come across the Bible, tried to debunk it, and have all failed. There's no one who's ever done it. No one. Couldn't you argue that those who failed are either atheists or are part of another religion? Of, yeah, but that's exactly what you would expect them to do. They don't want to abide by what the Bible teaches, right? So they're going to be more, they're going to, I mean, that, that's actually one of the really good questions that I had come to me one time. There was a guy, he was like, look at all these contradictions in the Bible. I'm like, show me one. And he started reading it. I'm like, okay, now show me the study you did that proves that, that your claim of this contradiction doesn't, isn't actually accurate. He couldn't do it because all he was doing was trying to find, quote unquote, semi things that seem to be contradictions and there's answers for all of those there are no contradictions something that's necessarily based on faith it's not based on faith that's the one thing about christianity it's not it's not based on blind faith you, it's based on objective truth if you stop believing in this book yes while theory but yeah okay I, follow me for a second here. yeah if you stop believing in this book yep. and all other people that do it currently stop yep. believing in this book christianity what stops christianity from ceasing to exist uh, well, nothing. Or God would. Oh, so God would intervene. Of course. How? He would save someone through His Word. Saving. Are you saying what that if you you, are you saying that if all Christians were gone? Yeah. Right. And all of the works were gone? Yeah. Okay. Do, then Christianity. I mean, is gone. you would literally have to burn the world to do that. Well, I mean, and not not only that. Of Europe and not only that. Europe. Not only that. Remember what my initial claim was? That there's no such thing as an atheist. Right? Well, no, you're only by only by admission, not by truth. Right? You can claim that, but and we've already exposed. The difference, and you have the same moral authority. Except that we've already proved that you can't make sense of morals absolutes without my Christian worldview. Thank you. You proved you proved you were wrong, if and you, you proved I was true. Absolute ownership of morals. Of course, everything is derived by Christianity. But thank you. Claim. Thank you. That's a claim. If it, I go here, and okay. Say, this is my building. Yep. There's mm -hmm. a, probably gonna be a ton of people that yep. disagree okay but if i still claim it right uh, of course i can say yeah i have the authority right uh, and then i'll pull out this yep. magical water yep. bottle that's from god yep. um, and so we're yeah. not talking about claims we're talking about objective truth yeah but you right? claim truth you don't have truth. Right. i do no because there is. yes because okay so no one has ever been able to make a claim for morality without being self-refuting apart from Christianity. Well, if we go back to Euthyphro and his dialogue with Socrates, you yeah. can't make that claim about what goodness or piety is without yeah. necessarily referring to God. Exactly. And by utilizing God, yep, I know that dilemma. all that morality is is arbitrary. No. How so? Because why, okay, let me back up a minute. Why is it wrong to steal? Because we say so. No, because God is not a thief. Why? Hold on. Why is it wrong to lie? Because God is not a liar. The moral standard reflects the nature of God. So you have the absolute standard of morality that comes from God's own nature that you cannot make sense of outside of the Christian worldview. Okay, so it's a necessary precondition, like so I said. You're claiming that God's word necessarily is by just definition of it being God's word, is true and moral, right? Well, his word is true. We are fallible. Okay. Therefore, we can read the truth and get it wrong. So then why be good? Why be good? That's my question. Well, yeah. okay, that's a great question. Well, number one, because God commands you to obey his law. Then why obey God? Well, you don't have to. Matter of fact, that's if you're not a Christian, you're not, okay. right? Yeah. So my claim isn't that you have to. And my claim is that you can't. You can't account for it, even moral standards, right? My claim is that everything that you do presupposes the Christian God of the Bible, and by making any claim at all, any claim for certainty, any claim for science, any of that, you're making a claim from the Christian worldview. It's like the guy who's arguing against the existence of air while he's using it. That's exactly what all people are doing when they deny God. I'm sorry? What? We're using God right now if we follow that analogy. You are not using God. You're, everything you're doing is based off of God. You're presupposing God. Thank you, that's a great word. You're presupposing God in everything that you do. When you do science, you're presupposing God 
and what his word says about him upholding things in a likewise fashion. Right? He says that by the power of his word, all things consist and hold together. So when you're doing science, you have no accountability for the principle of induction, why things continue to be the way they are. As a matter of fact, in a cosmic accident worldview, like an atheistic or a evolutionary worldview, we have no justification why things are going to continue to be why they are. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. So. I think an atheist can accept that. God. Yeah. That's, okay. That's, that's, that's fine. That's fine. You can continue to live in an arbitrary and a self-refuting worldview. Go for it. But that's what I'm doing. I'm exposed. It's self-refuting. No, that's truth. No, you've already exposed that to us. You've proved it to be true. And now we're just using science as another way to prove that you're inconsistent and self-refuting in your position. So thank you. I appreciate the questions. So anyways, what I really wanted to get to, these are great, you know, epistemological questions, talking about things like that and metaphysics and blah, blah, blah. But the real reason why I'm here is for salvation for people, okay? So here's the bad news, right? You have to know the bad news to get to the good news, otherwise it doesn't make any sense, okay? Right, for an example, if I, if I came to you and said, hey, guess what, I paid, you're fine, you're good to go, you're gonna be like, what's wrong with you? What are you talking about? But, but if I told you, hey, guess what, the cops clocked you going 100 plus miles an hour in your car, in your car, and guess what, they're after you, but I paid the fine for you, right? That's good news, right? Right, that makes sense. The bad news, we've already talked about it, is that issue you we're sinners us, no. no i don't want money from you i'm not here for money trust me right it cost me money to come here right so the fact is that we're sinners we've lied we've stolen there's no question about that yeah and we we blaspheme god's name just like that right and we think it's no big deal so so how do we yeah he, that's right there's a there's a threat of assault and murder right there right on camera you can't get rid of that but god has a better camera than i do he sees all things he, he, he sees all things, he creates all things, so he knows what's going on. He sees that you're, you're actually stealing his air right now, you know that, right? This is God's town, this isn't our town. This is God's world, this isn't our world, right? So the problem is, because the wages of sin, wages what you get paid, you will die someday. 10 out of 10 people have that same appointment with death. And the Bible teaches us that when we die, we stand before God and we're judged according to His standards. Not mine, not society's standards, but what He says, what His Word says, okay? And it's true whether I'm here or not, like I said. The only proof for that is an old book. It's not old. I mean, this one, maybe this one is, this one's like 2,000 something. But you mean there's the scriptures, right? Yeah. Okay. The, the content. The contents, yes. Very good. You yeah, right? probably bought it. Right. Like well, I mean, the same content that this is, is the same way we... We have a calendar system, so I don't know why you pick up one and say, yeah, this is okay. You know, it's, you know, 2022, you know, what is it? 2022 what? BC? No, no, no. AD, right? AD, right? After death. Of who? Of Christ. So you hold to this standard of the calendar and time, but when it comes to the things of how we can be forgiven, you're like, I don't want that. Well, that's what the Bible says. Wait, you're just, you're, you're justification of the Bible is the calendar? No, my justification for... Uh, your irrationality with why you would reject one and then not the other is is ridiculous. Because of okay? freedom of choice. <laughs> That's exactly well, the same well, thing. Well, technically, you don't have freedom of choice. Oh, now we're getting interested. Yeah. You, I, well, before we get there, I'll explain that in a minute. I want to make sure I give you the gospel message, okay? Oh, sure. I don't want to leave you with the bad news. What's the point, right? You're going to hell. Okay, well, I'm sorry. That, that's not going to help. The good news, the good news. Okay, is that Christ died on the cross for sinners like you and me. He lived the life you and I can't live, the perfected, perfect life, obeyed the law of, the God, of God perfectly. And then he went to the cross, an innocent man. They murdered him on a cross. And then he was buried and he was placed in the tomb. And then three days later, just like he said, he rose from the grave. He was over 500 plus witnesses, right? If they sat down in court, you'd have 500 plus witnesses that saw him after he rose from the dead. That's not even including his disciples and his apostles. These are people that were on court. in any court. Witnesses are what you get information I, I, from, I know right? What witnesses are, but like yeah, yeah, yeah. saw him. Oh, I'm not saying he was in a court. I'm saying if it went to a court, you'd have 500 witnesses, okay? Well, and then 500 then people, the 500, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yes, we saw them. Yes, we saw them. That's all they would say. And they also say, and we saw them ascend, okay? And so here's the, the part of the good news message is that if you believe in your heart that Christ died for you and your sins, 
Your sins were paid for by Christ on the cross. So God doesn't see you as guilty. He sees you as forgiven. He sees His Son. He's given you His robe of righteousness. So you're no longer guilty in the eyes of God. You're no longer an enemy of God. You've been made right with God. Okay? And He'll give you a new heart. Your desires of the world that are going on now, He'll change that. He'll give you new desires. Desires to want to go to church or something. Desires to want to read His Word and learn more. Okay? I'm not even telling you and pointing you to a specific church. There are good churches out here, but they better be preaching out of this. Because if they're just up there giving you a, you know, a good moral message or something, it's not a church. That's a moral, motivational speaker and that's garbage. You want somebody up there saying, we're going to go verse through verse. I'm sorry. There's what... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You mean Ephesians 4.17? Ephesians 4.17 actually says, Do not continue to walk around like the Gentiles in the futility of their mind. The futility, the, the irrationality, the inability to rationally... Thank you guys for your, for your time. I really appreciate it. God bless you with repentance and truth. Yeah, I mean, you, you, well, we could talk about the sign. Do you know what an opioid is? What does it do to you? depresses you or it numbs the senses, right? Okay, that's exactly what atheism does, but it does it to your conscience, right? If you deny God, you have no moral standard by which you have to live by. So you're in denial of God, you're living after yourself, you're living after the world, you're running from the God you know, but you're suppressing the truth of God in your unrighteousness. That's what the Bible says in Romans 1. Where is God? Well, in the sense that God is omnipresent, right? He's everywhere, right? Now, you don't you're not arguing with me to say that you have to see everything to believe it, right? Um, you don't know everything empirically, right? I just think it's crazy that you just like on a sign like put yeah. microphone. Yeah, of course. Like, of course, that's what the Bible says. You, when you say that, you prove this true. The Bible says that the preaching of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. Of course. Of course, right? God, it's, it even says that God has made us a spectacle to the world, right? So I'm, I'm willing to come out here, right? I was already assaulted once today. So I'm willing to come out here, be assaulted, be spit on, right? Talk with people because I love them and I want them to be saved from their sin. I don't want them to die in their sin. Really love people? Yes, yes, love warns people, right? Let's say you have, uh, do you have any siblings or uh, nephews, nieces? No? Okay, well, it doesn't matter. Let's say you did have a niece, right? You're going to care about that niece, right? And if they're in the kitchen and they think it's a good idea to put their hand on the hot stove, you're just going to sit there and say, okay, let's let them find out what's going on. No, you're going to love them. You're going to stop them. You're going to try to pull them back, right? That's exactly what I'm doing, right? I don't want people to die and go to hell. I want them to be saved. I don't want them to be forgiven. And the Bible says that the two greatest commandments are to love God and to love your neighbor as yourself. You're my neighbor. Like these people, all these people here, even if they hate me, they're still my neighbor. And so I'm giving them the truth of how they can be forgiven of their sin, right? They're lying, they're dishonoring their parents, uh, their sexual morality, uh, any of these things that hold us accountable under God's law and how we can be forgiven of those sins. Make sense? Yeah, I, I grew up in the church. That it's only brought me like uh, shame and guilt. So. Well, okay, well, that's, that's shame and guilt is only... I, I know, I know. This is that the Bible says that. As a matter of fact, it says that it's going to be. A, I think that, like, God lives in well, he d he doesn't. You have a you, what that is referred to is uh, uh, idolatry. You've made up a god in your own mind to suit what you want to do. It's like you looked into the well of spirituality and you see your reflection, and you're like, oh, that's the one. He's okay with whatever sin that I'm that I have. Your issue is sin. It's not about being happy. Well, it doesn't have to be. There's not a man in the sky. That's not what Christians believe. You say you were raised in the church? What kind of church? Like a Christian church or a Catholic church or a Methodist church or what? I mean, there's a, there's a lot of false things out there that are being taught from behind the pulpit, okay? And if they left you only in guilt, that's not where you're supposed to be. Oh, I'm sure you did, but that's not the point, right? The Bible can can really convict us of our sin, right? But it's the love of God, the mercy of God, the grace of God. Uh, no, it's trying to expose their worldview. No, no, I'm trying to expose the inconsistency. The difference? In, in currently? 
is one that is we're, we're I'm born again. We're both happy. We both love our name. Okay, but is happiness the arbiter of truth? Oh, so oh, so if somebody is self happy and raping somebody, then that's true for them. It's okay. I never said that. I'm not saying you did. I'm using Thanks, that as. Angel. God bless you. You see, God bless you, my friend. So the truth of it is that God has sent His preachers out, the gospel preachers, to preach to you the good news of the gospel that you may be saved, that you won't continue to walk in absurdity or to walk in the futility of your mind according to what the sign says here in, in Ephesians, that you may have forgiveness of your sins. You see, you're lying, you're thieving, you're going to give an account for your sins someday before a righteous and holy God. The Bible says you'll die someday. How about you, my friend? Are you right with God today? What makes you right with God? Well then, I'm sorry? Well, we're not basing truth off of feelings, are we? This is really stupid. Well, thank you for your, subje your no, subjective, arbitrary claim. Oh, fuck off. This is stupid. It's not Ephesians. It's just stupid. I'm an atheist and I'm proud to be an atheist. This is stupid. Thank you for your subjective opinion, sir. Don't try to act intelligent. You're obviously an idiot. Well, thank you for your subjective claims. Yeah, I'm worse than that, sir. I'm worse than that. You're an idiot. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. So are you. May you be blessed with repentance. Weed is, the way to Weed is the way to heaven. Thank you for your subjective opinion. Fuck you. Fuck you. Thank you for exposing the condition of your wicked heart, sir. I'm here for you. I'm here for the drug addict. I'm here for the drunkard. I'm here for the homosexual. I'm here for the sexual morale. I'm here for everyone that they may call upon the name of the Lord and be saved. But they might not die in their sin. They might not die loving their sin, but they may be made new, become a new creation in Christ. 